There is a lot to update you on regarding the latest from Japan and the damaged nuclear power plant there. First, we've got reports of some injuries at that plant. Paula Hancock is live at our CNN Tokyo bureau following this piece of news today. Paula, what has happened there? Well, Pauline, we're hearing from TEPCO officials that two workers have been hospitalized. And what they've told us happened is that three workers were working in the basement room of an engine room uh, trying to lay cables and they were standing in contaminated water. Two of those three have now been uh, hospitalized. Uh, they say that their skin has uh, believed to be, have been exposed to that contaminated water. Now they think it may have been uh, beta contamination uh, rather than gamma rays. They don't know at this point, but that could suggest that it's not as serious uh, as, uh, as airborne exposure by gamma rays. So certainly there is concern for these two workers. They've been taken to hospital straight away. And also other workers that are working in similar conditions where there is water on the ground uh, in, the, uh, in the rooms that they're working in. They've made sure that they have evacuated them as well so that this doesn't happen to anybody else. Pauline? Mm. And there's also still concern about the safety of drinking water in Tokyo. What's the latest with that? Well, the, uh, the government officials have actually lifted the ban on infants drinking tap water in Tokyo itself. Uh, this uh, was a ban that was put in place on Wednesday, saying that there was uh, more than double the amount of radioactive iodine in the tap water than was the government set limit for uh, infants, that's children up to the age of one. Uh, but at the same time, in a, a neighboring prefecture, Chiba Prefecture, just to the east of Tokyo, we understand that they have found in two out of three locations uh, that the uh, the iodine levels in their tap water is higher than the legal limit. So certainly that is a concern at this point. Uh, the government has been giving out bottles of water to families that have infants uh, at this point, 240,000 bottles giving out today. They'll do exactly the same on Friday, but they are saying in Tokyo at least, you can drink the tap water once again uh, for, for any infants. Pauline? All, all right, uh, Paula, thanks so much for the update. Um, Charles, as you can see, there's still lingering concern about the safety of the power plant workers as well as the safety of the residents. Charles. This is a very low level of radioactive content, which will be not harmful for the health, even if consumed over a long period. And for babies under 12 months this time, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government took this measure based on a very conservative set of standards. So for other people, people other than babies, the radiation levels will have almost no effect. That's the official word from Japan's chief cabinet secretary regarding radioactive iodine levels in Tokyo's tap water. The government is distributing bottled water to Tokyo households with infants. However, a sign of improvement, new tests on Thursday show that, show that the tap water is now safe to drink. People are still scrambling for the bottled water, though, and who can blame them? Well, welcome back to World Business Today. Let's turn to our Sarah Seidner right now. She's been investigating what's being done to bring peace of mind to customers at the grocery stores, the dinner tables, and also to the people of Japan. Fallout around the world from Japan's announcement that high levels of radiation have been detected in raw milk and vegetables. Now several countries have banned or put a hold on imports of milk and fresh vegetables from certain Japanese prefectures. The latest places to keep those items from reaching the marketplace are Singapore and Hong Kong, which is a major importer of Japanese food. Australia now says it has a holding order in place, and that means that food is held and tested, and if it fails inspection, it's sent back. The United States was the first to block vegetable, fruit, and milk imports from Japan. Now, let's take a look at the four prefectures affected by the ban. All of these here are affected by the ban, and they're in and around that heavily damaged area of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Now for this picture. This is the Fukushima area. This is a spinach farm that's there. It's a very a heavily agricultural industry in that area, but obviously no one out there working. There's no reason to harvest that because, of course, they can't 
cannot sell it. And now to a picture from the Philippines. You're seeing there someone from the Philippines Authority testing Japanese foodstuffs. And lastly, a shot here from Hong Kong. This is a place that sells sushi. And there's a little sign here that you can probably barely read, but basically it's telling people that their fish is not coming from Japan and listing all of the countries where the different fish is coming from, trying to assure the people who come and buy that all of their food is safe. Now, while most countries are still accepting meat and fish from Japan, many are testing items from the affected areas. In Hong Kong, some local restaurants have decided to take action even before the ban to ease any worries customers might have. Well, the decision really is to sort of stop the or cease the importation of fresh produce from Japan. And that was really based on the, the fact that we weren't really getting clear or consistent information, um, whether it be from various departments or um, government bodies or even the media as to the effects of the, the fallout or the situation in Japan. So it was really just to take the ultra cautious position of just standing back and saying we're not going to import fresh produce at this stage. Hong Kong has gone a bit further than other places and banned imports from one more prefecture located right here. This area here, very close to Tokyo, and that came after Japanese officials said radiation levels were higher than normal in Tokyo's tap water. The bans are really a blow to a country that has a great reputation for high-quality food. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Hong Kong.